It's Friday night, it's midnight here at the Win, and we're gonna check out the action. So what's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another vlog, and you know what? Everyone's here dressed up to the nines here at the Win. We're uh, we're dressed up in our Luck Fox merch, of course. Here for comfort, here to grind out the two five games, gonna see what the action's like tonight. It's midnight, it's late, let's find some good action. This place hasn't failed us before, why would it fail this now? Let's go for it, let's see how the action goes today. Wish us luck, let's hop into the cards. 2-5, baby, for all the 2-5, let's get into it. Starting off the session back at the good old 2-5 here at the win, we pick up Jack-10 of hearts in the big blind. There are two players who limp, we're out of position, definitely not gonna limp this one or check. I put in a raise and size up big to $40. Both players in position make the call, so we're going three ways to a flop of ace, seven, four, rainbow. Ace high flop, not a lot going for us besides some backdoor heart draws and the capabilities of repping a strong ace. I go with that and down bet to $40. We only get one player in plus one who limped makes the call. We're hoping to see some sort of improvement when the turn comes the king of hearts. We've improved to a combo draw and I look at his stack. He's got about $500 in there and definitely going to continue applying pressure with the heart draw and gutter to Broadway. I put in a, another bet and sizing up to $140. Probably thinking that I'll have to jam the river if I do get called to continue with maximum pressure. But given his posture facing my large bet, seems like he has some sort of weak ace and when he folds, we don't have to fire the third bullet and empty the chamber real quickly here in this session. We take this one down. Next hand, picking up king seven offsuit in the small blind. This is just a three-way limped pot. I put in the three extra dollars with king seven. We're off to a flop. The flop comes king, king, deuce, two spades. I check with trips. The big blind throws out a bet of $10. I think here we can make the maximum by just flat calling and slow playing right now. Although we can check raise here since we're out of position, I elected on just a call right now. We're off to a turn. The turn is the ace of hearts, looking like a decent card here. So I check to him and hoping he'll fire out, but he checks it back sadly, and we're off to a river. The river is a king. River and quads, we're back to getting quad city. It's been quite some time on this vlog, to be honest. A little bit too long, but here, I don't really know how to get maximum value given it's a limped pot. There's not a whole lot in the middle, so I just try to check again, hoping he can bluff at it. He just snap checks it back. We obviously show our hand. I think quad kings are gonna take this one down. We ship this massive pot our way. Hand following that, this one gets a little bit more dicey with ace jack offsuit in the hijack. Plus one opened it up to $20, and I think that this hand plays a lot better as we can three bet and hopefully just take it down pre-flop or play a pot in position. I three bet to 60. The idea goes out the window when the button makes the call for 60, didn't want that to happen. That induces the plus one player to make the call as well. We're off to a flop three ways. When the flop comes jack, 10, nine, all clubs. This is a little gross. We do have top pair and top kicker, but that's not that strong considering how dynamic this board is. When the plus one player checks, I think we can do some pot control by checking, especially when the flop hits the other two players so much more than I do. So I check when equities seem to run fairly close together, but the button has other ideas when he throws out a bet of 50. Plus one makes the call for $50, and we do have top pair, top kicker. With this price for only 50 to make the call for so much in the middle, I just go for it, I'm not gonna go anywhere, I call as well. We're off to a turn, which becomes a total brick deuce of diamonds. Action checks back to this button player once again, and he continues with a bet of $100. The player in plus one now makes the fold, and once again, it's a relatively small bet given the size of the pot. I'm not gonna go anywhere, I just make the call, and we're off to see a river, hoping to see another brick. When the river is a seven, it's not necessarily a great card as any eight makes a straight now, but it seems fairly unlikely he has an eight, given he did bet two streets. I check for a third time, praying, praying to see a check from him, but he doesn't. He just counts out $200 in chips and slides them into the middle. Well, 
Once again, we've got another really great price as we do unblock club draws that may have missed. We do beat a small line of hands like King Jack, Queen Jack, Ace 10 maybe, I don't know, whatever. I'm just gonna make the call and see what happens. Feels like a little fishy regardless if we make the call or fold. And when we toss in the chips, he shows over 9-7 off suit. Not a club in hand, and I can't do much besides chuckle and say nice hand man. He bet flop and turn with bottom pair. Rivered bottom two pair, and he's going to take this one down. Just want to make a quick interruption in this video to announce a few upcoming plans and trips I have to Texas this month in a few weeks. I announced last video that I have a meetup game going on at Rounders Card Club on September 22nd. We got a first meetup game and it's all the stakes you could ask for, 1-2, one, 1-2-5, two, one, two, and 5-5, five, five. so I'll be hopping around all the tables. You can catch my punts at every single stake available and possible, so play whatever you want. I'll be there hopping around and having a good time. I'll also be at Rounders again on the 21st and 23rd as well to play on their live stream, so it should be some pretty fun games if you want to tune in on YouTube. I'll be there. Secondly, I'll be making a trip back to the Lodge in Austin, September 25th. We've got a fun one, and we're playing a 25-50 game with our buddy Mariano that you'll see on the vlog. So if you want to tune in as well, if you're from around the area, you can catch me September 21st to 23rd. I will be at Rounders Card Club, and on the 25th, I'll be up at Austin, Texas, playing the 2550 live stream game, and that'll be a good time. If you want to come say hi, come support the channel, come say hello at the meetup game and catch some punts, you feel free to do so. September 22nd is the meetup date. I'll see you guys there from around the area. Let's get back into the hands. In the next spot with ace queen off suits, we're on the button and there's a cutoff open to 20. Next to act here, definitely gonna put in a three bet. I think the cutoff can open fairly wide and we have a really strong hand. So I size it up to $60, folds back to the cutoff who defends and calls. So we're playing another three bet pot, this hand just a little bit better than the last one. Going to a flop, which comes jack eight three all spades. He decides to lead out here in this spot for $50. We've got two over cards and the queen high flush draw. Definitely not going to go anywhere given this bet. I'm going to call and see a turn. The turn is a good looking one in the king of spades. Now we've got the second nuts. Really great card to see as we only lose to the ace of spades now. But he doesn't seem scared about this card and continues betting for $75. Not going to be raising here right now. I think our hand's just pretty good, and we're pretty much just bluff catching at this point. Maybe he can be doing this with the 10 of spades, but just going to continue with the call. We're off to see a river. The river is the deuce of diamonds, another total brick card, and this is not going to be a fun spot to be in. When he sizes up large, he bets out $400 over betting the pot. I've been at this table for a little bit now. This player seems like he's here for fun, a little bit recreational, and these large bets just always seem to be the nuts, considered it were on the river. He overbets the pot. I think it's a little ambitious to think that he's bluffing here in this spot. And combined with him betting all three streets, I wouldn't be really surprised if he flopped a flush or something or had me the entire way. While I'm weighing my options, I take a look at him and he also just looks extremely calm. Doesn't look like someone who's tense or nervous, which they would look like if they were bluffing. So like I said, I don't think most players are going to be bluffing here, even if it's for value. Him doing this with the only other hand that could make sense would be the 10 of spades. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think about it for a while and as agonizing as it seems to fold the second nuts in this spot, I just let it go. Fold my hand face up. This player doesn't show his cards, but does say that I made a nice fold. So who really knows if he's lying or not? He might have had it. I'm convinced that he did, but we're going to let it go. Although folding is boring, sometimes folding the second nuts might be the right play. And the next notable hand, picking up ace jack off suit once again. We're in the small blind and there's a middle position open to 20. Cutoff makes the call for $20 and here onto me. I never really like calling out of position in the small blind and this hand's pretty good, so we're gonna put in a three bet. We're out of position, so we size up to $100 and only one player in middle position makes the call. His name's Danny who watches the channel, so we're going to a flop out of position. Flop comes Jack-10, three, two hearts and a diamond. We've got top top and we're really liking this spot on a board that can contain a lot of draws. 
So I lead out for $150 sizing up here, and he thinks for a while, counts out his chips in his stack, and ends up putting in a raise. Sizing up to $400 with about $300 behind in his stack. Damn it, this is a little weird of a spot to be in. I think sometimes folding here is reasonable against some players, but against someone who can have a lot of draws and we unblock all of those draws. For so little behind, I think we're just going to rip it in. That makes the most sense and hope we're up against hearts or king queen or maybe even a worse jack. So I rip it all in and he's obviously not going to be folding. He makes the call for 300 left and we're off to see a run out. We're all in. The run out comes 10, then another 10. So we end up boating up 10s full of jacks. And we both have ace jack, so it seems. So a little bit anticlimactic here. No blood drawn. Nice hand, Danny, as we chop it up. In this next hand, it's a little bit of a premium. Pocket aces, two pointies here. We're on the button here, and when the plus one player limps, he's got about $120 in his stack. A little bit short stacked here. I'm gonna bump it up, raise it up to $20, and this plus one player who limped makes the call. So we're going heads up. The flop comes king nine, three, two diamonds. He checks to me and C-bet incoming. I just size to 30. Music to our ears. 30 doesn't seem to be big enough for him. He rips it all in for about $190 total. Obviously, it's an easy call. So let's go to a run out and try to hold. Yeah, you turned down some big aces. We just show our aces immediately. We scoop on a clean looking run out. We'll take it down having chips pushed our way. You <laughs> should. Be pretty easy to do so. For the last significant hand of the night, pocket tens and we're in plus one. I open things up to $20 and we get three players to make the call around in position of me. And now onto the small blind, who puts in a three bets of 125. Given how much money is in the middle, this sizing seems a little small. We're in position, we have a pretty strong hand and a playable one at that, so definitely going to make the call. Oh, by the way, this small blind player covers our stack of over $1,700, so certainly going to be in there. We're pretty deep. I make the call, and only the cutoff makes the call as well, so we're going three ways to a flop, second to act here. When the flop comes queen 10 5 rainbow, flopping middle set in a large three bet pot multi way, I think that's the dream. Even better, the small blind puts in a continuation bet of 175. We've got no other option to do but make the call here, so that's what I do. I put in 175, and surprisingly, the cutoff comes along as well. So we're off to a turn, still three ways, and when the turn comes the king of hearts, it's a little bit of a scary card. We lose to a lot of pocket kings that the small blind may have, but we feel a lot better now when the small blind checks to me. When he checks, now pretty confident that I'm ahead. I'm not really sure what the small blind player can have. I guess sometimes he can have a hand like ace-queen or something like that, but now we only lose to kings and queens and some ace-jacks or jack-nines. But besides that, we're pretty confident we're ahead and we're just going to be going with this hand regardless of what happens. So I size up with so much in the middle on such a dynamic board. I bet out $600 hoping to get stacks in on the river against the small blind player. But now onto the cutoff player who hems and haws for quite some time and ends up making the call for a little bit less. Looks like he has about four to $500 in his stack. And when the cutoff calls, the small blind folds. So we're going all in once again to the river with a set. The river is a jack. Oh my god, I couldn't have asked for a worse run out. Any nine or any ace makes the straight and beat us. But I show my hand and he says that he had two pairs. So pretty scary river here, but we end up scooping a really big pot here for this 2-5 game. Happy to end the night off on a little bit of an uptrend. And we're off to the outro. Welcome to uh, another edition of an outro where it's a little too late. It's 3 a.m. It's actually not as bad as the other times that we've uh, actually gone DJ hours. We played for a few hours. We were in the game for 2100. 
and we were out of the game for 28-49. Thank you to that very last hand with pocket tens. Flopping a set three ways in a three bet pot, always a recipe for success, even though on a scary run out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, looks like we're up on the uptick right now, on the uptrend with poker. I'm glad things are going well. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the vlog. It's really loud. I'm gonna end it here. Be on the lookout for the next one. Luckbox merch is available if you wanna check it out uh, in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Vegas is treating us well. Peace.